Greetings, Moonchild. I'm Morpheus, or Morphe, to those I want to see again. I know, looking at me, you wouldn't guess I was raised by a village of tieflings, or that I was kicked out of said village for less than saintly actions involving the head priest and his wife at different times. Say, I have this trick that the fairies taught me as a kid. I can walk right into your sweet little dreams. Oh, or not so sweet dreams, you naughty thing. I've made a few friends in my days, probably twice as many enemies, except that one time with the priestess of Tallow, she got exiled and, oh, never mind that story. I prefer the animals and Fae. They just get me, you know? Oh, the scars? Yeah, that was a bad day. I'm just as surprised I made it out as you are. Besides, they make me look fierce. They also remind me that I have seen that true betrayal can only be committed by someone close to you, someone you love. The rest of my circle weren't as lucky. I had some of my best memories with them, and now I'm the only one left. Or the only one that I know of. Life is like a river. It never slows down for anyone. You either flow with it or get shaped by it. Guess which path I chose. Whiskerforge's parents lived in the dwarven settlement of Earthheart. Slow to be accepted into their neighborhood, they apprentice forged to Fiona Steelcloak, a smith of some skill. All was well until war hit their corner of the world, and young Whisker Forge struck out to help defend his homeland with the help of his ancestors. After the war and his apprenticeship, he started wandering the realms and helping people where he could. Along the way, he met Mira, a cleric of Salune. You actually noticed me. That's strange. I'm no one of consequence. Millions of kids get left to their own devices on the streets every day. Especially human kids. I'm human, you know? Um, I figured out pretty quickly it's better for everybody involved if you don't notice me. That's why I left the city as fast as I could. Well, that and because I saw his face everywhere I went. Hi, I'm Zafu. Uh, I'm a young rogue half-orc, just basically trying to find my place in life. I grew up mostly on my own, uh, so basically I had to learn how to be sneaky and steal just to survive. I may not be the smartest dude around since really I didn't get a proper education, but I can handle my own. Uh, I enjoy a lot of alone time. I like a nice alcohol and I love kisses from ladies and men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Faye, every hey. time. <laughs> you skipped the setting part again. <laughs> the setting part? <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I need to change that. So, so what it does, hello audience. So what it does is it plays all of our, our character intros and then it goes back to the Stormlord uh, uh, screen, and then it goes into the setting in prose, and then it goes uh, back to the Storm thing, and Faye forgets every time. <laughs> uh, next time, next time, you know, I'm gonna write it down. You got this. <laughs> we can never, we can, we can never have a stream uh, that starts out a hundred percent perfect. It's it's part of our charm. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Episodicals uh, Campaign 3, Stormlord's Wrath. Uh, we, we love you, Faye. We forgive you. We don't need to know the setting. We, we're still at the goddamn inn. We know it. <laughs> so, uh, oh, there's kind of an echo. Um, let's see if we can fix that. We should be live. Hello, everyone. Um, you know us. Uh, I'm Sarah. I'm the CEO of Rumble Turnus. I have with me Faye, Tony, and Colin, um, who uh, are gonna be our awesome players today. Christine wasn't feeling very well, so um, they uh, aren't gonna be with us tonight, but we'll be back here with their new character next week. Um, so, yay. Um, what else uh, do we have to talk about? So we have um, a streamathon coming up April 10th. Um, through 11th. If you haven't joined our Discord community, you should because we're going to be opening up the casting calls this weekend. We've got 36 hours of gaming and lots of slots for you guys to come play with us. So um, join the Discord and uh, and hang out with us. Um, 
Then we've got um, how to interact with us during the game. So uh, there's bits, points, subs, and follows. So uh, you can donate any of those to get your, uh, to impact the game. So um, you get inspiration or an auto hit or a nat 20. Um, and spending bits and subscribers, and I believe follows as well, also affect the stream boss. So you'll see the stream boss. Randy is the last stream boss, so we have to defeat Randy. Everyone has to defeat Randy. Um, and once that HP bar gets to zero, then uh, Babyface, who is our chat design um, player character, so it's the chat player character, gets to come in and jack shit up and uh, fight the next bad guy that we're fighting. So super strong, really creepy and largely wonderful. So um, so help us out. The other thing that you get to do is bits, follows, and subscribes also affect our, uh, or no, bits and subs affect our giveaway. So we'll be doing another giveaway today. So you get a nice dice bag filled with goodies. Um, there's Realm Alterna sticker and patches. I'm holding push to talk, so I'm doing this one-handed, so give me a minute. So there's like stickers with Realm Alternus. There's a patch. There's some Shadowrun dice and a Shadowrun Edge token and some buttons. So you get all kinds of uh, neat stuff in there. Um, so how you enter to win is type in hashtag Yege, and that is one entry. Uh, bits, for every 100 bits that you donate, uh, you get another entry. And if you subscribe, normally that's $5, uh, but we'll give you seven entries for subscribing to us. So. Yay, gay away and uh, enter to win. And we'll drop that in a couple times during our game. So anything you guys want to add before we kick off and get back into our adventure? I um, wanted to brag really quickly about another really fun D&D thing that's uh, small business support. And it's called Found Familiar. If you guys are coffee connoisseurs in quarantine, I started doing more coffee because I was tired of instant coffee being home all the time. But anyway, they're really cool because they make like coffee, but they're all based on D&D skill set. They have like Thieves Can, they have Face Step, and they're all different flavors. And then they commission small artists, and then you can like see their information. So they give them credit on the bags, and they're really delicious. So this one's Meta Magic, also very good. My favorite is Face Step, uh, not because of the name, but because it's delicious. Yeah, if you like coffee, check them out. And I can put a link in here because I think I had it up originally. And that's all I have. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else want to add anything? All right, then let's get started. So Tom is working on getting the map up. I'm pretty sure if you're new, uh, welcome to the game. Uh, so far, what has happened is uh, Morphe, Whisker Forge, Zarfu, and uh, Lyron showed up at this inn. And before Zarfu or Lyron could even get inside, they saw that the inn was getting attacked by some undead. So uh, Lyron being the hero they are, uh, took it upon themselves to start attacking before they really had any backup. So um, Lyron unfortunately didn't last very long um, and, uh, and has actually returned as a specter. And uh, so these guys bravely fought some zombies, some wraiths, and some specters, uh, along with some of the people of the inn. And now uh, we are down to one Zombo and uh, Lyron as a specter. So um, we're gonna finish out this battle and then see what happens. So, so last, exciting. yeah, it's, it's so exciting, guys. <laughs> so when last we left off, let me, let me uh, fix my system here. There we go. Um, it's Lyron's turn. So who's ready to get attacked by a specter? Um, I'm going to take a hard pass on that one. I do not volunteer myself. <laughs> um, let's see here. So I think I'm going to try. Let's see. What is my specter's intelligence here? I let the specter keep, I think it was the physical stats. Um, of Lyron, yeah, and then uh, it took on the um, the mental stats of the specter. So let's see, they're like average. Um, so I think what we're gonna do is, poor specter here has found it largely 
unhelpful to attack this uh, this cat person. Um, so <laughs> I think uh, she's gonna change gears here and let's see who's in range. Let's 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 find some townsfolk because that's fun. Um, oh, but I really want to hurt one of you. Hey. <laughs> So I think Sarfu is still under a zombie, but let's, let's, I don't think with your 27 roll of stealth that it's going to see you, so, um, yeah, it's going to attack, uh, next to Whiskerforge. So let's, let's, let's life drain that, that friend. All right, so that to attack was a 10 and then a nat 20. Ugh. All right, so let's see. Um, my people, their AC is ten, so that's good. Let's let's go ahead and do some damage. So I need a con saving throw first. All right, they made the con saving throw. So now we're gonna do. Damage is 13 necrotic. Oops. So you guys are, are fighting and battling and feeling really confident because Zombos are dropping and finally not getting back up. And then another townsperson falls. So you feel that cold just, uh, the, the temperature of the outside just uh, lowers drastically and you, it almost feels like not just the temperature, but like the life force around you um, has dimmed and gotten colder and you see one of the townspeople fall. All right, our very last Zombo. Um, they're real dumb. So it's just gonna keep trying to, to bite uh, Forge. Hold, please. My computer's loading a little slowly. Come on, Zombo. At this rate, like, no one's going to be able to service any drinks at the tavern because there will be no one left in this town. I mean, free drinks. <laughs> yeah, let's pour ourselves, hey. Raid the bar. <laughs> that was dark, Tony. It was. <laughs> All right, a seven is going to miss you. And now we are at Zarfu. Okay. So. You, I believe, are hiding under a extra dead zombie. Um, oh, I had actually, I'm next to, oh, uh, right. Morpheus. To say, right? Yes. Or, yeah, yeah, to Morphe. Yes. So. Um, I think I will, my short bow has a range of 80. Can I hit? You very can. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting the squares are five. I keep thinking they're bigger for some reason. Okay. <laughs> nope. Um. If they right. were uh, that big, you'd be uh, a 10-foot <laughs> wide orc. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, yeah. I will, right now, I will attack the specter with my short bow. Shoot him. A 16 is going to hit. Awesome. So you did eight piercing and you have a friend that is engaged in melee so you get sneak attack damage 
So you just did uh, math, 21 damage, right? Did I do that right? Yeah, I did that right. 21 damage yes. to the specter. Um, as you do that, and it's it's just kind of like sucked the life out of this townsperson, um, you uh, see it kind of glow bright with that. And then as soon as you hit it, it like fades immediately and almost um, almost blinks out. Um, but it's still got a little silhouette, little glowing silhouette there. Creepy, but very cool. Awesome. All right. So next, is that your full turn? Do you uh, want to use a bonus action? Uh, I mean, I really would kind of like to hide again. Uh, you get your bonuses right now as long as um, an ally is engaged in combat. So since Whisker Forge is within five feet of the specter, um, you get the same attack bonus whether you're hidden or not. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah, um, I will stay here. All right. So, uh, great. Then that means it is Forge's turn. I am going to attempt to hit. I did not mean to move. I'm going to attempt to hit the Spectre with my hammer. All right. Let's see what happens. Ew. And I will be using two hands and hoping that, you know, it works in my favor. <laughs> I don't remember. Do you have a magic hammer? No. All right. Um, I know. It does hit. Okay. Oof. And you said you're doing this one handed or two handed? Two-handed. Right. So as you swing, so you see it kind of like lose shape as you're winding up to um, to to hit it, and you're able to adjust your attack. So you were going to swing toward its head, but you saw that it seemed to to take to the the um, crossbow bolt that just went through its chest, and so you kind of aim down a little bit and just hammered that thing home like a nail, uh, and through it it goes. Uh, and as you connect, you feel like the resistance of your hammer, like it's it's kind of hitting something. And then all of a sudden it keeps traveling through like nothing is there. And as you look, it's because nothing is there anymore. Awesome. And um, roll a perception for me, everyone. Sixteen here. 17. All right, so Forge and Zarfu, uh, you see beyond this fight and this mount, this uh, mob of townspeople, you see that little heap on the ground that was um, what looked like an uh, uh, elf to you um, or a human to you. Um, like it has been holding still, but like this little expulsion of air happens. <laughs> Uh, a little puff of air escapes its mouth uh, that is the same color that the specter was. All right. Next up is Morphe. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. I have very little left. So Morpheus is, is she's looking rough, uh, but... She also has this resilience in her eyes, so it's like she's kind of been here, done this before, and have seen worse, so she's not too messed up with it. I'm going to cast, um, I believe I can do this as a ranged attack. Yes, so I'm going to cast Ice Knife at level one, because that's all your girl has left. Okay. And then I just do this button. It seems to like appear twice, so I have to like make sure I don't touch it. And I'm going for the last zombie. All right. And you roll a 14 to hit, mm -hmm. which does hit. All right. And uh, so as uh, the hammer uh, travels through uh, Lyron's spirit form, um, 
coming right over the hilt of it and over your arms, Whisker Forge, uh, is the ethereal form of this um, icy knife. And it, um, it goes straight into the head of the remaining zombie that's been trying and failing to bite you. Um, and just the force of it takes it all the way back and takes it to the ground. And you kind of hover over it with your hammer, like, are you getting back up? And it does not move. Yay! <laughs> Survived. Yay. Just barely, but oh we did gosh. it. <laughs> and with that, um, the townspeople um, kind of breathe this sigh of relief. Um, as you've been fighting, largely, like, as the mob came out and you saw uh, it inter them re uh, interacting with the wraith, um, you saw a lot of them trying to swing. Um, some of them seemed to kind of connect, uh, didn't do a lot, but there were a lot of good fighting spirits in there. Um, and uh, pun intended, I guess, except not. Um, and then uh, you also noticed that the, um, the cook had come out to fight that had been about to serve Forge and Morphe um, a stew. And the, um, the smith... Uh, that you had seen in the stables when you had arrived, uh, had drawn its uh, their two hammers and had been ready, had been running up to the fight as well. So um, there's a lot of noise now as they realize the threat has fade, faded. A lot of people seem exhausted, um, fearfully looking around and wanting to get back inside before they get surprised by something else. Um, but the, uh, the smith with the hammer in each hand um, comes up to you and uh, uh, kind of re-equips the hammers and, and slaps Forge on the back and, and says, you can take a beating. Sure can. That was impressive. Uh, name's Tiga. Forge. Well done. Uh, uh, you guys really saved the day. I don't think we all... Um... And he kind of looks around and some of the townspeople perk up to listen and goes, why don't I buy you a drink? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will reach over to Zarfu if he's still hiding and kind of offer him a hand to lift him back up to his feet and be like, you did a pretty good job. I don't know what tactic you had going on there hiding under the zombies, but man, I don't know. I have no idea what just happened. Let's let's take a drink and maybe rest up a little bit. You did good work. Zarfu still, I'm gonna say, has like some like zombie juice or whatever, like on his face, and he's gonna like wipe it off like a little bit, and then be like, "Thank you very much. I would love a drink." <laughs> As you guys head inside, back uh, toward uh, the doors of the stable, um, you see that the bartender and the um, owner of the establishment. Um, that had been barricading the doors originally. They're there to kind of open up and, and usher everyone in. Um, the the owner uh, very kind of solemnly, like doesn't have, seem to have a lot of facial expression, but she kind of nods at you and offers a hand and says, um, um, thank you uh, for what you did out there. Uh, this isn't the first attack. It probably won't be the last, um, but uh, appreciate it. Well, we couldn't just stand by. And I mean, who who was that? Was that someone who lived here who ran out into the battlefield? Like, who who was that person? Um, she she goes who? Um, and the uh, the cook actually who's approaching says, uh, um, looks like there was a traveler on the road. Uh, almost made it, but was on the wrong side of of the arrival, I guess. Well, I. Being that you guys have this happen to you all the time, how often are we talking? Do we need to get out of here, or why haven't yeah. you guys gotten out of here? We've got we've um, as soon as you say that, um, the the owner kind of like puffs up and and says like loudly for the filing crowd that's coming in to hear like, um, while the high road is known for its many dangers, um. We are here to stay. We are a safe haven for travelers on their way. And we are, as you could see, well prepared for this kind of uh, attack. And you are more than safe here. Am I close to Whisker Forge at this point? Or can yeah, I move close to Whisker Forge? You're filing in. I'm going to lean down to Whisker Forge's ear and just whisper very quietly, like, wasn't very safe haven for that traveler, was it? 
like very sarcastically but not wanting to start a fight and i'll just stand up straight again and and look at the crowd filing into the tavern make a self roll (laughs) oh this is great i have (laughs) plus zero Um, you see uh, her eyes kind of narrow and go, um, the f- unfortunate traveler hadn't made it to the inn yet, did they? And I'm, then, like, uh, I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Like, I, I didn't hear anything. And then just not make eye contact. <laughs> she looks over you to uh, to the um, the cook again and goes, see that they're fed. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and heads back inside toward the table that she sat at um, originally. So... I'm going to take a moment to move everyone back inside. If you three, I would like you to kind of introduce your characters and what each of you looks like and how you're going to interact with, uh, with each other as you sit down at the, uh, in the inn. All right. I guess I will go first. Um, so the three of us, I assume, are kind of huddled together as we're making our way back in here pretty tirely. So Morpheus is very tall. She's about um seven foot eight like she's reaching the eight foot mark uh is including her very tall stag antlers which now if you remember earlier had flowers they're now all gone as if they've died off um and were never there her skin is pale green like forest moss and her hair is very it's like an ombre so it starts off as dark forest green and then it goes into like a deep creek blue at the ends and she's got bright golden eyes that seem far older than she looks uh but her skin is covered in scar marks from like her neck all the way down and then it disappears underneath her robes she's just covered in them and she walks with very like she walks with a lot of lackadaisical swagger like "Eh, you know i'm here and i'm badass but i'm not really that into it kind of thing and you'll notice she'll stay close to whisker forge as they're moving into the tavern And for, uh, Forge, uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, Forge, you know, on the other hand, is short. He's only uh, four foot seven, and he has, like, longer gray, like, longer hairs for something. Um, and, but he usually styles, like, the bit in between his ears, like, up into, like, a little faux hawk. <laughs> um, and, yeah, um, I, I do, like, I've imagined him with a vest on, and he's very anti-sleeves, but he will wear pants, so. What kind of fur pattern does Forge have as uh, a cat? So, I, I think solid gray. Like with like the very tips in some places bleeding to white, but he, yeah. <laughs> and last but surely not least, what about Zarfu? Okay, so Zarfu is uh, exactly six feet tall. Um, he is he's a half orc, um, but he's like more of like. His body is more like like a sneaky human, but then his face, uh, he has like short, like kind of spiky black hair. Um, he has a lot of piercings, uh, which I tried to add some today, um, but he has piercings all over. His eyes actually like are red and then with like black pupils. Um, and he his skin is like a greenish grayish just kind of like a you know like ew like a orc um and then he wears a pretty simple like black he definitely likes black clothes he loves like gloves he likes to be covered um i do have this thing i have this hood but i don't want to wear this hood but um yeah Awesome. All right. So um, as you guys make your way back inside, um, the uh, the bartender rushes right over to, to his post. Marticia, who is the um, the owner, sits back at, at her table where you saw her several episodes ago, uh, kind of going over some books. Um, the uh, 
sh- the cook runs back off to the kitchen um and uh and the smith sits down at the end of the bar um and uh, some of the the patrons have retired um you you saw a staircase in the stables that uh leads up to um what is probably you know the the hotel part of the inn uh and there's a staircase inside the common room as well um but as you guys walk in, you see the bartender uh, look up and wave at you and flag you over and go, uh, there they are, the, the noble heroes. Come come sit, come sit. You're, uh, you're drinking for free tonight. And he, he like blatantly looks at the owner as he says that uh, and gives her a big grin um, as, uh, uh, and she just kind of looks up straight face and looks back down uh, and keeps at her work. I would like to look around for our friend Silas, the halfling that we were talking to earlier. Did she survive? This? Uh, Silas did, and she's sitting back at, um, or it's Scylla, uh, and she's sitting back where you had seen her before, um, near the uh, kitchen. Should I invite her over? Uh, real life anxiety and game problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you say that out loud or? <laughs> That was me talking out of character. Oh, okay. um, I'll give her. I, what, does she look solemn, like injured? Does she look distracted, or? Um, she looks out of breath and like sweaty, and and holding a crossbow that's much too big for her. Um, and uh, she kind of like set, has set it on the table, like waiting for um, one of the people that works there to come collect the weapons. Um, but she's she's there uh and she she's kind of like startled her eyes are wide and she's she's looking around uh but she's not doing anything at this point okay i'm not gonna do anything yet but i'll keep an eye out she like is looking like she's looking for company then i'll invite her over but until then i'm just gonna focus on our little group okay um so are you approaching the bar or are you uh gonna sit at your own table or what's up I personally would like to sit at our own table as far from the bar as possible because I don't like to be indoors anyway. And I'm already seriously doubting why we came to this town and trying to figure out what what we're going to do next, I guess. So I'm going to sit down at the back and not get a drink. Okay. Uh, And this isn't even a town. Uh, This is an inn along the high road uh, on your way to Leyland. I will also um, look at Zarfu and I'll, I'll invite him over actively to come sit with us. But on Wednesdays we wear pink, so. Got it. <laughs> so you, what, what were you doing out there? You, you're the only orc I've seen on, on the road for a while, actually. Right. I, um, you know, I just travel on my own and uh, I just happened to be here and it was crazy just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time that happens often with me unfortunately you weren't heading in any particular direction uh not earlier no i'll look over at whisker forge it looks like they want to they want to speak up i was going to say that uh it it seems to be the right place at the right time in this situation um, if neither of you are going to go up and get a drink, do you want me to bring you something? All I want is some really hot floral tea. I don't want any meat or, or beer at this point, but I doubt they have any of that here. Can you just ask for some hot water and then I'll take care of the rest myself, please? And she says it very sweetly when she's talking to her friends as opposed to her normal, like, serious tone talking to others. I would love a glass of strong liquor. Any particular kind, or? It's all good. I love all of it. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. Morphe will um, watch Forge leave to go up to the bar, and then she'll just kind of rest forward on her elbows over the table and just kind of look around and, and take count of what all the villagers are doing. Awesome. Um, so Forge, as you head up to the bar, uh, um, the bartender, um, is, seems really friendly and, and focused on you and goes, 
Ah, there's one of the heroes. What can I get you? What's it going to be? Uh, so I would like a glass of, or a good mug of hot water. If you have a floral tea that you could recommend, um, can you, can you put the tea on the side? Um, and then I would like some ale and our, our new friend would like some hard liquor. You got it. Uh, and he quickly pours the, the ale and the, uh, the liquor, um, while shouting out, out of his, uh, over his shoulder at the window that's open into the kitchen. You hear about the tea? And, uh, you hear uh, a voice come out and go, uh, you don't need to shout. It's not that big of a place. <laughs> I got it. I got it. You got the tea. I got the, I got it. Okay. Um, and so uh, he he winks at you and goes, uh, the bartender winks at you and goes, um, you need anything, you're drinking for free all night. So uh, you come on back up here anytime and I'll uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll get you settled. Uh, you're going to get the best food. Um, we're going to make sure you're care of for the night. Uh, okay. And you come up and talk to me. I'd like to hear all about uh, what brings you this way on the high road. Uh, but I understand uh, your friend seems to want your own space. So I... I get that. Name name is Bacchus, by the way. Nice to meet you, Bacchus. I am Forge. Um, make a perception. Okay. Eight. Okay. Um. You don't really notice much about him, um, except that uh, he's got some scars on his face. Um, that's really it. Okay. And that he's human. Yes. Um, on my way back to the table, I would like to check in with the halfling and make sure that she's okay. You're so nice. I love it. <laughs> um, Scylla kind of looks up at you and is like, that was something, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I, I it was. Are, are you okay after all of that? Well, mostly just frightened. That was, uh, that was more uh, adventure that I was looking to have. I've heard that there's, um, there's terrible things along the high road, and and lots of creatures from the forest can are 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 there that can attack travelers and even bandits. Uh, but I, I, you know, it's all stories. You never think that stuff's gonna happen to you. Right. I mean, fortunately, fortunately, you were with other people and everything, too. I am glad that you're still here. You too, friend. Um, I'm, I'm looking for how they're going to collect uh, all of all of these this these weapons. And then I'm, I'm heading upstairs. Uh, I'm heading to bed. And uh, um, with that, uh, you hear from the kitchen again, since you're right by it, like, I'm coming, all right? I Get the food, make the tea, collect the weapons. How about we all settle down, okay? Or maybe, you know, uh, uh, Tiga, maybe, I know you're off the clock, but maybe you could, I don't know, help. Uh, and Tiga's like, I'm helping. I'm helping by sitting here and drinking my beer and not uh, getting in the way and not getting in the way of that temper that you've always got going. So I'm good. Uh, and uh, and so you hear some of that back and forth, uh, but yep. Scylla largely just like sits there and goes, maybe I'll just leave the crossbow here and uh, well, good night, Whisker Forge. And she heads toward the staircase and, and um, heads upstairs. Okay. And then I'll head back. So you've got the ale and the liquor with you, but no hot water or uh, tea of any sort just yet. Mm -hmm. Oops. She's working on the tea. If you didn't hear her yelling. I heard. I think I think she's got a lot going on. She sounds like a cool yeah. person. Oh, what? oh my gosh. We're so rude. We're over here sitting. What? What is your name, by the way? My name is Morpheus, and this is my... Dear, dear, sweet friend, Whisker Forge, who has dragged me to this tavern out of the goodness of their heart. <laughs> and so far has been a great time. <laughs> okay, so uh, while Morphe is saying that, uh, Zarfu, like, 
takes his uh glass of liquor that he got and he just is downing it he's just drinking it like and he finishes it and puts it down and he goes hello i'm zafu uh thank you for your help earlier and thank you for letting me sit with you uh by the way, um, as you're doing your intros, you do hear uh, from the other end of the inn that same familiar voice of the cook going, Son of a, you got to be effing kidding me. And she comes barreling out of the kitchen and marches over to uh, the owner and bends down and whispers real quick. And they seem to be like in something heated. Um, and uh, finally, the, the cook rushes back to the, the kitchen and calls over their shoulder, uh, um, you're gonna owe owe me for that missing coin. Missing coin. That sounds dramatic. <laughs> All right. So if the cook was walking away, uh, where where is the cook now? In like in comparison to our table, did she, did they get dragged back to the bar? Or are they still making their way out? Um. So what they did, they they tour. If you're looking at the map, they tour from the kitchen to there. Back to the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know what what should we. I feel really nervous staying here longer, Whisker Forge. If they said these zombie attacks are frequent, I mean, I don't know if they're on an, on an ancient burial ground. If they pissed off a nature spirit, you know, those nature spirits that they'll they'll get pretty frisky if you try to build anything anywhere near a, a pond. Just don't even get me started. But weren't we like trying to? go and help other people or do you want to hang around and and kind of take it easy for a few days with that golden heart of yours i mean we should really find out how long this has been going on and i would like to help with funeral rites yes that but... that is probably the right thing to do and you'll see Mor morpheus gets very serious at the mention of the funeral and then she sort of nods very solemnly and she sits up and she'll she'll i'll go check on the tea and then i'm going to make my way briskly up to the bar to the closest person there all right so that is uh bacchus or the smith so bacchus is here at the end and uh tiga the smith is over there i'm gonna go Mm, I already met Tiga, and I'm not very good with with normal conversation. I'm, she seemed pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm going to make my way over to Tiga, and I'm going to kind of wave in her direction and see her sitting down at the bar, so I kind of initiate that that contact with her. You doing all right? You need anything? You, you need any bandaging up, or uh, you, you did a lot out there? Um, Morpheus looks down and she's got a few bruises and scrapes and she shakes her hand. She's like, nah, it'll heal in a few hours. Um, I'm more concerned about the remaining villagers. You said that this happens a lot. Can you kind of give me more? When did it start? Like, is, has this always happened? Was it an event triggered that started this? Oh, well, you know, we're, uh, we're not far from the Neverwinter Wood and, you know, it's, uh, you can see it from here and, uh, uh, I've got the ocean on one side and the wood on the other, and there's uh, always been all kinds of, you know, monsters and and uh, bandits and stuff that make their home in the uh, less populated areas. So, uh, um, you know, this isn't new. This is, you know, there's been many enterprise and hosp uh, hostelers that have tried to make uh, an inn here. It's it's a lucrative travel place. It's, you know, right where the Tribor Trail meets the high road. and uh, some have succeeded for years before uh, before uh, they've just given up because of the the monsters and and bandits. But uh, you know, Marticia over here, she's she's very determined and she's got a mind for business and she seems well prepared. I think as you you saw, um, and you know, I think everyone needs a safe spot to rest the night on a journey rather than traveling the entire way and being out in the open to get attacked. Are the zombies? more frequent than any other monsters recently or is it just sort of luck of the draw with what you're going to get next coming out of the woods lately actually now that you mention it it has been uh zombies more than anything else i'm i'm not sure where zombies come from um usually the ground yard nearby or something <laughs> what usually usually from the ground has been my knowledge on yeah. 
on where most undead. Thanks for that clarification. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I wonder if maybe we could help you guys out. I mean, my, my friend and I, we're, we're pretty well traveled. I mean, we've definitely dealt with worse than zombies. Just, just they just came out of nowhere, and we'd we'd already been traveling so long. I am very curious. Uh, would you? Who would I speak to about helping uh, perform funeral rites and helping with the bodies out there? It just doesn't feel right leaving them out to the to the elements. Um, it, it, she kind of uh, looks over at um, where Marticia is sitting and and over at the bartender and goes, uh, you know, really, you can do what you like. Um, you know, we're we're I'm personally used to a life on on the sea. And you know, there's only so much you can do when when those uh, those around you die. So um, do what you will, but largely we uh, we bury them in the sea uh, come morning. We don't want to do anything at night, obviously, because risk of attack is greater. So um, we wait until morning and and chuck them. <laughs> chuck them. All right. Well, would Marticia know maybe more about the zombie increase? The zombie uh, increase, uh, maybe. Uh, I mean, Marticia, what do you know about the zombies? Marticia kind of uh, looks up very straight-faced and goes, um, my business is within these four walls and protecting those that come here. I'm not really interested in monsters and what lies beyond. Can I do an inside check to see if I get any sense that maybe she's not giving me all the information? that I need, and maybe she knows more about what's going on outside. I swear I'm only pressing this one time. I don't know why it's going twice. Well, a nat 20 was the first one you did. So um, you, as you turn and look at Marticia, um, what you see, first of all, she's really lovely. She's a half elf. Um, she's got a, a very tough demeanor. Um, and you can tell that there's an intelligence in her face that seems like almost cold and calculating. Um, but she's like, it's more businesswoman-y than like, like manipula manipulative or anything. Um, and, and like, she's been bent over her work and she's like responsive enough to what's going on. But you think like genuinely, like she just, that's not what interests her. Like dead people, uh, like coming and attacking and stuff like that. Like, she knew the risk when she bought this property. Um, and she knows the stories of what had happened to the previous owners um, and giving up and, and stuff like that because of monster and bat bandit attacks. But largely she's like, I she sees this as a profitable endeavor. And so like, she's focused on what's within these four walls. Okay. I will um, go ahead and pat Tiga on the back and say, if you hear anything else, I know my friend would love to help. And I'm kind of rolling my eyes a little bit, but I'm trying really hard to be sincere because I know I'm probably going to do it for my friend, even though I'm just like, I'm trying to get out in the woods and not be here anymore. And then I will excuse myself. And I actually want to approach Morticia. Um, but I, I want to come across as I'm going to change my demeanor a little bit, very soft, um, pleasant, not necessarily flirty, but not as abrasive as just going up to Teague like I was like, hey, how are you doing? Okay. By the way, um, as uh, you go to disengage with Tiga, um, she reaches out and, and shakes your hand and says, thanks again for, uh, for your work out there. Um, and uh, you see that she, um, like on her wrists as she's shaking your hand, she actually has bronze bracers that are shaped like three lightning bolts. I feel like that's probably going to be important later on. So I'm going to write it down. Three lightning bolts. It's really cool, actually. The bracers, like, connected underneath. And on the top, there's gaps in it that show, like, the, the clothing underneath. But it's, it's um, it largely it has the zigzags that show uh, the, the, the cloth in between. They're really pretty. Okay. Um, do you want to um, check on what, I kind of want to hear what 
what Zarfu and Whiskerforge are talking about, or I can continue on with Morticia. It's up to you. Um, as you head to Mort Morticia, and I will uh, um, move over to them, uh, but as you head to Morticia, you see um, the speedy cook uh, kind of flamboyantly like kick the door uh, open and uh, has arms full of food. Um, and it's actually um, the, let me make sure. Um, they, they go marching through and like tossing, um, like some dishes on the table, largely the bowls of stew that were similar. But when, uh, she gets back to the table where Forge and Zarfa are waiting, she sets down, uh, the stew, but she's like, um, I saw what you did out there and it's, it was brave. So, uh, I gave you something a little special. Please be careful. Uh, if you don't like spicy food, maybe you want to avoid this, but, uh, it's a recipe I've been working on. I'm really good at this. Um, so, you know, you want to try it out. Just uh, just, just watch yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you please um, make perception checks? All right, Zarfu, as, um, as they, they reach down... Uh, um, the cook reaches down to put the food down um, and kind of like leans on the table to talk to you. Um, you see that uh, on her, on their neck beneath each ear uh, are tattoos of curved daggers. Um, Sick. <laughs> awesome. And then uh, with that, uh, um, they kind of shrug and turn around and go, uh, call if you need anything. And, like, bustle back off to the kitchen. <laughs> so what are, what are you two doing, uh, while, while Faye is, or while Mor Morphe is gallivanting off throughout the, the inn? Um, I feel like I would just, because I still don't know anyone, um, I would just look at Whisker Forge and say, um, hello, um, where are you traveling? Did we have a place in mind? <laughs> that is a great question. Where are you traveling? <laughs> uh, I think Mail has sent me to, uh, Fandolin. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> so we're, we're heading to Fandolin. You? I've never heard of it, but um, I like the name. I mean, with how you fought out there, it would probably be okay if you tagged along. We'd have to double check with Morphe, but if you want. I would be uh, very grateful. And... Uh, oh. Um, then Zarfu kind of looks down at his glass and, uh, he just looks at it and it's empty, but he doesn't go get another drink yet. He's just like, mm, holding the empty glass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could go get more if you want. Mm, okay. <laughs> so then he'll get up and head to the bar. <laughs> okay. And we will find out what happens after a 10-minute break. Oh, good. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Uh, stay tuned. We've got some great commercials for you. And uh, and we'll be, uh, be back. Hello, everybody. Um, I am going to turn this down and make sure that that echo isn't coming through. But let me know if the echo comes through my speakers because... Uh, I'm tired of holding down push to talk while GMing and I talk with both hands and I try to do like multiple things at once and it's just really frustrating. So let me know and I will put it back on. Um, but uh, we are back. Don't forget before we get back into our story here, um, hashtag yay gay enters you to win uh, a, um, what are we winning? We are winning a Rem Alternus swag bag. So you get a little dice bag um, which by the way, Janity, I see you on there with, uh, being the new stream boss. So we have one baby face appearance, uh, to happen tonight at some point. 
I don't know what they're going to do in, unless we start another fight here, but we'll find out. Got um, Rumble turn to stickers. Uh, we've got some Shadowrun D sixes. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do the, the beauty shot here. Um, so and get it to reflect in the light because my light is off to the side. There it is. There it is. Uh, uh, oh yeah, that's nice. That's real nice. Um, then we've got what else do we have in this bag? I've got a Rumble Turnus patch, so you get a dragon buddy, or you know we like to call them zombos. Maybe this is a drago. <laughs> like that and then we've got some poker chips and edge tokens so we've got our chicago shadows poker chip which uh also has the dragon on the other side we've got a shadow run uh edge token so that's all nifty and cool uh and some buttons some buttons too so you get all kinds of swag uh for typing hashtag yegay in the chat we will do the drawing at the end of the stream so stay tuned after the credits and that's when we'll do our big reveal, and then stay on if you're the lucky winner, because I'll message you to get your address on Twitch. So uh, make sure that you stick around for that. Must be present to win. And uh, what am I missing? Is there anything else? Oh, you also get an an entry for the hashtag Yegay. You get an entry for every 100 bits that you donate, and you get seven entries for every subscription uh, that you do, which is worth $5, but um, you get seven entries on that. So it'll also hit the stream boss, which is super exciting because that baby face makes an appearance. So I'm gonna have to think while uh while we're we're talking about how what baby face is doing uh uh during all of this. Maybe um maybe what we'll do is for for uh we'll see how drunk baby face is getting at the bar with all these free drinks for you guys. Yes. I want to party with baby face. Okay, baby face is sitting at the bar now. That is that is what is happening. Can someone explain baby face for any of our new viewers? Well, that's one of you guys. <laughs> Colin, right. you drew you drew but baby face. I, I did draw baby face. <laughs> uh baby face is um our chat fighter. He is Oh, I don't have the picture with me. Well, he has green skin. He has fiery hair. He's eight feet tall. Um, he has pull arms that he uses to attack, but he actually walks on his hands, and he has shark fins for legs, and he has a baby face. I think that's it. He has eight arms. Oh, yeah, he has eight arms. <laughs> uh I have an idea. I think what we'll do is canon in game. We will have a drink called Baby Face, and it has a stalk of broccoli in it, and it gets lit on fire at the end, and you have to blow it out and drink it, and yes. then you can save for like how fucked up you get. Yes, <laughs> yes. Do, I am here for that. Yes, yes. Um, one of you has to take a shot of Baby Face. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'm real excited for this. Um, yeah, sh chat, you should make this drink. Someone design this drink and we'll do something during the streamathon or something. I don't know. I'll try it. Uh, <laughs> broccoli on fire. <laughs> I don't know. Like, well, a broccoli stock like sticking out of the drink isn't going to affect it that much. True. Um, yeah, okay. But like, I don't know, something or maybe like a, a fiery like taste, like something that's got that like charred flavor or whatever. Like, wait, if Babyface drinks moonshine and Zombo blood, could you not make a Bloody Mary with a shot of moonshine, mm -hmm. stick a stock of broccoli in there, and then set it on fire and drink it? <laughs> <laughs> Great ideas. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, everyone. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, oh no, Shay is talking about making this uh, a song, which means it's going to happen. So we'll, we'll, see, uh, we'll see what happens there. A burning Mary, yeah. All right. Well, in the meantime, uh, Zarfu, you are heading to the bar, I guess, to order a baby face. Yes, I am. So. Oh, you know what, though? How rude. Um, I feel like I, I get up to leave, but then I turn to Whiskerforge and I go, I'm sorry, can I get you another ale? Hmm. 
Sure. I know that's something that I shouldn't have to think about, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. All right, then he's going to scurry off to the bar. Um, okay. All right. So, Hello. Oh, sorry. Uh, as you approach the bar, um, Bacchus uh, heads on over to you. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check as he approaches. So you see, just like Forge saw, you saw that he's a human. He has a very scarred face, uh, lots of like slashes in different directions on it, um, and uh, uh, a very crooked smile. And he wears a um, a pendant around his neck of a trident. Um, and uh, he seems very friendly. Uh, so so as you come up, he goes, uh, ah, I knew I'd get uh, more of you up here tonight. So what's the drink gonna be tonight, friend? Uh, I would like one more ale, please, uh, for the feline friend. Okay. And for me, I would like your strongest drink. That would be a baby face. <laughs> so he, he starts running around. And he goes, good on you. If you're going to drink for free, you might as well drink expensive. And he's like pulling stuff up on the counter from underneath that like bottles you can't identify and um, a stock of broccoli for reasons and uh, um, a, a flint and stone um, for some reason. And like, as you're watching him finesse all this, uh, it's just artistry when he puts together and it's in a really big glass. Uh, and then the stock of broccoli goes on top, but it's sticking out far enough that he pours like this one little final layer on top and then does the flint and stone and it just lights up and uh, sizzles. Um, and uh, and you can see like the, the little uh, leaves of the broccoli at the top, uh, um, like start to uh, sizzle a little bit. And it's actually kind of a pretty effect. It reminds you of like watching like a tree burn or something like that. Not sure what it's supposed to accomplish, but there it is for you. <laughs> so Zarpu takes the drink like while it's burning and he holds it really close to his face and he's just like, Oh my god. It's a like beautiful he's enthralled. Drink. Yes, he's so excited. Um and then he will say thank you very much and he is going to go back to the table with Whisker Forge. Okay. And uh um <laughs> Forge, what are you doing? Um I am going to finish my Ale, but as he's coming back, I'm going to be like, what is that? It's called a baby face. And he takes a sniff and he's like, it kind of smells like blood, but, um, you know, bottoms up. And then he just like all at once, like while the broccoli is like still a little bit on fire, he just like drinks the whole thing and like swallows it. And... He sets it down, and then he, like, takes a second, and then he goes, that was delicious. Um, please give me a con saving throw. Um, and also, you, you notice, like, this little bit of uh, charred black uh, dust on your face um, from where the broccoli was burnt. Uh, Forge, were you going to say something? I might want one of those next time. <laughs> Oh, I, I will go get two more. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, actually, okay, so he's going to get up and he's going to actually walk by Morphe and be like, um, I just had the most incredible fiery drink. Would you like one? Uh, Morpheus will look back between him and Morticia and she, she's hardcore considering it, and then she'll shake her head and be like, not this time, but I'd love to hear what, what makes it so delicious. Uh, definitely the burnt broccoli and the blood. <laughs> and then she, like, looks at him, like, very, like, with a very quizzical look on her face, like, burnt broccoli? What? <laughs> Amazing. So, 
then I guess I'll go get two more and then head back to the All table. Right. So while this back and forth is going on, um, you finished your talk, uh, Morphe, with uh, Tiga, and you were about to turn and head toward Marticia? Yes. So um, you said she was hunched over her work. Is she like doing paperwork or scrubbing or? Yeah, as you get closer, you see like there's a pouch on the table and some coins um, spread out that like she seemed to have been counting. Uh, But like it's several different pieces of uh, parchment and like uh, stacks of paper. Um, And it largely seems like very business focused and and, like stock and inventory and like letters uh, and stuff like that. So. And was she the one who chased down the cook um, about the missing coin? Was um, that her? The cook chased Marticia down. Okay. Uh, so I will, appear, I'll be on the opposite side of the table. I don't want to interrupt her work, but I am going to kind of lean over. Um, and I'll just say in a very, like, calm, soothing voice, which Morpheus does have a very soothing voice when she wants to. And she'll say, you know, it takes a special kind of person to kind of stand up against the the wild forces out here you guys did really good out there i'm i'm really impressed with your villagers and how well they just jumped into battle does that happen a lot um she kind of looks up at you uh um and like narrows her eyes a little bit but she's like um the monsters uh come from the forest quite frequently yes so we have to be prepared and I don't, I don't know the the villagers are just travelers passing through uh but we know what to do we know to hand out the weapons we know how to lead and therefore we make sure that we keep our establishment and our people safe mostly you know it could be very beneficial to your business if maybe these monsters attacks came in less frequency do you think that's something that maybe a couple of brave travelers would be able to help with if they come from a specific place in the woods. Maybe we can take a look, give you guys some slack out here. I don't know personally where they come from, but if if you are offering to track down the source of where the monsters come from, I mean, sure, you know, I'm, I'm sure not only myself, but some of the neighboring towns would more than be more than willing to pay for stopping the attacks or or at least um, stopping the majority of them. What kind of uh, business are you doing right now through your paperwork? Anything you need help with? Um, she kind of looks at you like why you're so curious or whatever, but she kind of um, shrugs after a minute and says, uh, uh, I'm... Uh, looking to set up a uh, a mutual protection pact with uh with Leilon. Leilon so is having this... a business proposal to send to them. Is that a city? Uh it's a a little uh well, make a history? Make... Yeah, make a history check or survival, one of the two. Oh, we're straight up going survival. <laughs> Uh, 25. Um, okay. So, yeah, you know, uh, Leylon is actually not far from here. Um, maybe, like, another day's travel. Uh, it's one of the... It, it actually used to be an abandoned, uh, town for, like, a couple centuries. Um, but just recently, uh, some, um, enterprising individuals have been trying to, to build it back up. Is this um, in the direction of Fandelin, or is it in the opposite direction? Um, let me double check. Uh, so Leilon is directly south on uh, the road, uh, on the high road that you are on, that the inn is on. Um, and Fandolin is on the Tribor, off of the Tribor Trail, so you would head east from here, because uh, this inn is right on the crossroads of the Tribor Trail and the High, Ro- High Road. 
Um, so Phandalin, you would be heading east. Leylon, you'd be heading south. But it's only a day's travel if we... Yeah, do. probably a day to get to Phandalin and probably a, a day to get to Leylon. Um, so it just depends on which direction you you pick. All right, I will... Um, let's see if I can be creative with this. So I, I'm very much trying to be pretty charming, um, but I am going to offer my assistance. Uh, I'll look at her and be like, you know, we're pretty well equipped, and my friend and I were already heading out of town tomorrow morning if you needed maybe an armed delivery for that mutual agreement to Leylon. I wouldn't mind helping at all. Maybe they'll have more answers about where these monsters are coming from. Um, she kind of, uh, she considers, um, she's definitely thinking about it, and she goes, uh, yeah, um, actually, um, I'll, uh, I'll take you up on that, and, and, uh, you deliver what I need you to, um, and when you cross on back, if, uh, uh, you can bring whatever their response is, if there is one, um, I'll pay you, uh, I assume you're, you are going with your friends, so, I'll give you, um, see, three of you, um, how about, uh, 60 gold, 20 for each of you. Well, gold's not as important to us, but, um, you go ahead and drop that off before we leave tomorrow, either at the room we're staying in or before we head out, we're probably going to have breakfast and we will get it taken care of and see if we can help you guys out. Fair enough. It'll be a late night for me to wrap this all up in time, but uh, that's not unusual. I will wrap my knuckles on the table very gently and be like, well, I'm a night owl, so if you need any company while you're up, then just let me know. And then with that, I will actually um, head back to the table because I see these baby face cocktails that they got going on, and I am intrigued. So I will go back over to them, and I'm going to sit down, and the first thing would be like, is I'm going to look at Whisk Forge and be like, okay, so I kind of volunteered us to help some people to go. So, like, how do you feel about going to Leyland tomorrow? Maybe look into this monster problem. I, suggestions, opinions? It's up to you, but it would be helpful. It would be helpful. Great. Well, what, um, yes? <laughs> what say you, Zarpu? I think it sounds like fun. Oh, are you going to be traveling with us then? Uh, your friend invited me, if that's all right with you. Anyone that has a drink at our table and can handle their own against Zombos is definitely welcome to travel with us, especially it seems like we're going to need some extra help on these roads. And then I will clap my hands and be like, all right, then it's decided. Tomorrow we will head to Leylon. What What do you guys got going on? here what was this broccoli what 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 is this well and before before you like as you see their drinks you also see that there is a, a cup of hot water that's slowly cooling down um and uh and a plate that has um uh, uh like kind of like that cheesecloth kind of thing to to soak tea in and a pile of herbs on there and it smells delightful like this cook knows herbs and knows what they're doing. So this is high quality shit? High quality shit indeed. Okay, I will- um, If I ever make a tea brand, I'm gonna call it high quality shit. <laughs> just be right up front with what it is. I will take a deep inhale. I'm like, ooh, it smells like, it smells like vanilla. And oh, is that a little bit of cinnamon bark and peppermint in there from the South Seas? And then I'll go ahead and wrap it up in the cheesecloth and I will dunk it in the hot water and let it steep while I'm cool. listening to the conversation. Meanwhile, Zarfu, I need that con saving throw. Oh, you did make one. Um, yes, I It looks like you made a, a con check. Oh. Instead of a yep. save. So remember the saves are uh, above? Or are... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Nat 20. This is strong? <laughs> uh, Zarfu can drink, y'all. <laughs> Beautiful. So I feel like when, uh, oops, when Morpheus is uh, smelling her tea and she's like, it smells so great. And then uh, Zarfu's just going to, like, 
inhale like the smoke and he's gonna be like oh i love the smell of ashes and then he's just gonna down it again <laughs> and i'll need another con saving throw okay forge what are you doing um if, if my broccoli is still on fire i will blow it out and then i will also drown my or down mine okay con saving throw please yeah. Okay, so um, largely the, the the liquor is so smooth that like you really don't feel it a, a affecting you um, until you kind of hit that second drink and, and get that down. And about 10 minutes later, you're, you're, you kind of have that moment where like you turn to look at something and the whole room like catches up a second later and you go, oh shit, like <laughs> that's where Zarfu is right now. Uh, but Forge, you're still feeling pretty okay. I think I lost off that one. <laughs> it's good. I also have my ale. All right. I have, I have a feeling. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. They're doing pretty good. I was worried I was going to have to drag them to their beds, but go on with your bed selves. <laughs> <laughs> and Faye, are you sticking to tea or are you going to have a baby face? You know what? Once I, ha uh, let's say that you know, it takes me about an hour or so of conversing to drink the tea down um, before I decide. I have terrible constitution, but I also am intrigued, so I, I'm going to order one, too. And then I'm going to first take, like, a regular sip and see how strong it is. And then I'm just going to look at both of them and be like, to new friends and new adventures, I guess. And I'm going to toss it back. All right. Calm saving throw, please. All right. So I go up to my... Okay. Which which one are we doing here? Next to skills and below your attributes. Do I click on like the act like the constitution that I have at the top? Click on that dice. Nope. Roll? Nope. Uh, right under that, you'll see the saving throws box. Oh, I see it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Great that, is, Thank that you. is some strong uh, baby face. Um, just like baby face is able to knock his enemies on their ass, so can the baby face drink knock Morphe on hers. The last sober thing you hear from me is this is why I stick to tea, and then that's it. Awesome. <laughs> Anyone else anybody talking to, or are you guys just drinking to yourselves the rest of the night? Uh, Zarfu's gonna look at Morpheus and be like, What happened? Is she alright? Because <laughs> he just doesn't really know what's going on. Like, I feel like at this point, he's just kind of like looking around the room and everything's just like spinning and he's just like doesn't know what to do. So. I grew up with dwarves, but she didn't have that. So I, I think she's a lightweight. Oh, got it. <laughs> what is, is that? Is she talking about me? As she's like trying to really hard to keep. It feels like her antlers are like weighing her down, even though she's had them for over like three centuries at this point. And she's just like, it's, just, it's about me. What? Yes, I said, let's do one more round. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Excellent. Just as drunk as can be, you know, Zarfu's <laughs> like, let's keep drinking. Um, as you shout that, you hear a laugh from the bartender across the room. Um, but you've noticed that the, the common room is kind of uh, uh, emptying out as people have been retiring. It's getting late, later and later and later. And finally... Uh, uh, there's few enough patrons that the bartender's not completely busy and kind of comes over with uh, three more drinks in hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take it. And she's like, like it's like sloshing over the edges a little bit. Is she's like, oh, let's go to, to pants, and then she drinks it. <laughs> Two pants. Two pants. Damn it, Chris. Two pants. <laughs> 
All right, give me your, your calm saving throws, everyone. All right. Uh, Forge, you're still feeling fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not, like, bothered at all. You're, you're, you're okay. Um, meanwhile, uh, Zarfu and Faye are what they call shit-faced, and, uh... No, it's called they baby-faced. <laughs> they're baby-faced. <laughs> I, yes, indeed. Well said. Um... Is anyone trying the the spicy pie meat pie that the Ooh. cook brought out? Yeah, I I, I will. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, Morphe ha has her hand like slung over Zarfu at this point. Like ro like there's not even any music playing, but she's just like rocking back and forth. Like there is. Amazing. So if you're trying the um. The pie, go ahead and make one more con save for me. Okay. That's an eight. <laughs> and Colin? You said you're trying it too, right? Yeah. Yes. Eight. All right, so Colin, you try this, it's this pork meat pie and um it's it's fiery but it's got a nice flavor behind it like it's not one of those like hot things that's just meant to burn you um it's got this really nice flavor and this really nice aftertaste as well and like you're like yeah it's got a nice kick to it meanwhile forge like it's one of those that like if you could run your mouth under a faucet you would um you've got tears coming down your face and um it not only feels like your mouth is burning, it feels like your esophagus all the way down is burning. I, I, I'm, I'm, I need a nail. All right. So, so Zarfu is eating this, and then he looks over at Whisker Forge, who's has tears streaming down, and he goes, "Why are you crying?" <laughs> I don't need a lot of spicy food, but it is good. In the way that pain is good. <laughs> In the way that you regret all your life decisions up to that particular meal, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I feel like Zarfu would just grab like a, <laughs> like a middle chunk of the pie and like hold it out to Morpheus and be like, did you want to try it? And she'll like, and she'll just like, oh, just over the mag, like, just sniffing it and goes, ugh, ugh. she like gets really nauseous and then she's going to proceed to hurl over the side of the table. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> and then Zarku's just going to go, oh, and then he's going to put that piece back on the pie. <laughs> uh you hear the bartender laugh again from across the room. Um, and like, it's almost like a, a, like the cook knows what laugh that is and goes, son of a bitch. And uh, <laughs> like a few seconds later, you see him come out of the kitchen with like a mop and uh, paper towels or whatever you use in D&D &D <laughs> I'll just see the cook and I'll be like, the tea was so good. It was so good. The tea was so good. And she's like slowly, like her eyes are getting really heavy. Go sleep it off. And then uh, cleans yeah. cleans up and heads back to the, the kitchen. Um, the bartender does, as you guys are getting drunker and drunker, except for Forge, the bartender does come over as it empties out and uh, sits down and goes, uh, uh, we're going to we're gonna close up for the night uh, in terms of what we're offering for drink uh, at the bar. But... Uh, Wanted to come sit with you and, and uh, see what what brings you to this area. Oh, we were hand, heading to Vandalin. Wait, Vandalin, right? Vandalin, yes. Uh, because we were told to <laughs> by an old Toto. <laughs> um. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, what do you hope to do in in Fandolin? They're they're mostly rebuilding there. Yeah, 
clearly you're strong uh, adventurers. You're going to collect some bounties and make some some money. I mean, I like to help people. That's what I do. And then Zarfu, who's drunk, hearing the word money, goes, Oh, I love money. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Um, so he starts uh, um, talking with you, and he kind of shares the history of, of uh, the inn with you, um, and that he's uh, uh, he joined up with Mar- Martisha here as the bartender about six months ago and has become like uh, kind of a valuable second hand to her. Um, and, uh, when he hears that you, um, are switching gears from Phandalin and heading to Leylon, um, he, uh, he's like, oh, Leylon, there's, uh, there's lots, uh, of history there at Leylon. Uh, are you familiar with it? I will try to speak, but, I, like, she's too baby-faced at this point. She's like, you know, Leylon's forge, uh, like, can't understand anything she's saying. He'll nod at you and go, exactly. <laughs> um, but he'll, uh, um, he's going to give you some information. So bear with me while I, while I get through this with you. Um, Leylon was once a mine in town that sold copper, nickel, and silver to Waterdeep. It was also a port where merchants sometimes offloaded goods onto barges, since most ships cannot pass uh, the town's shallow mud flat. Uh, two hundred years ago, the wizard Thalavar made his home in Leylon and raised a tower at the town center to conduct his mystical studies. The house of Thalavar was topped with a planar beacon that lured creatures from other planes into the structure, trapping them there. After Thalavar mysteriously disappeared, the people of Leylon were content to leave this tower and the monsters within alone. The Spell Plague, a divine phenomenon that twisted Faerun's magic, corrupted the tower's defenses, and creatures sealed within were freed to to attack Leylon, and the magic of the planar beacon was redirected back into the material plane, causing humanoids who looked upon it to become paralyzed. Leylon was quickly overrun and subsequently abandoned and has remained that way for more than a century. The first action that the soldiery of Neverwinter took was to destroy the planar beacon inside the house of Thalavar. Galio Elibrio, he's a mage, you know, he has rebuilt it to perform some studies himself into the ethereal plane. Before its fall, Leylon was defended by a loosely organized group of adventurers. They called themselves the Swords of Leylon. When the House of Thalavar released its monsters, the swords fought to cover the escape of the townsfolk. They died, and it is said that they have become ghosts bound to Leylon's ruins. They now watch the rebuilding of the town with caution, hoping that the reconstructed tower does not bring similar disaster. Really and then Morphe like looks up. She's like, "Yeah, that's why I was. That's what I said." <laughs> any um, do you guys have any questions for him or anything you want to? In character, um, I probably wouldn't be able to have any questions, so I wrote it down anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Zarfu would just go. Oh, I've always wanted to meet a ghost. Yes. <laughs> I mean, didn't we meet a few outside? Oh, is that what those were? <laughs> I mean, we we can definitely meet a few more. <laughs> oh, look, but nice ones this time, you know. Not that again. <laughs> <laughs> And then I feel like for a second he just like not like falls asleep real quick like <laughs> mid mid thought yeah like awesome. he's succumbing to the alcohol a little bit more awesome um with that it empties out um the kitchen lights turn off um you see uh the um 
You see Marticia kind of waves off the others to to retire. She's going to stay up in case any late night travelers come through um, and to keep kind of a watch. Uh, but you guys, um, uh, as as the, uh, the smith walks past you, um, leans down and kind of whispers, uh, your room's been paid for. It's uh, um, upstairs and uh, at the end of the hall. Thank you. And with that, we are going to call this uh, a night. And you guys are going to get a long rest. Colin, you heal yes. your uh, lost max HP. Yay. Um, you get all your spell slots and your health back. And... Uh, I love pressing that long rest button. I know, right? It's a great feeling. Um, and uh, when we come back next week, we're going to be, uh, it's going to be the morning that you guys head toward Leylon. Um, and you're going to get to deal with the, the dead zombos that are outside and um, and see who's left of, of the villagers and uh, who might be willing to travel with you down toward Leylon. Yay! Thank you guys. We survived. R.I.P. Lyron. Yes. R.I.P. Yes. number Jeez. seven. Or yes. number seven. Oh my gosh. He was the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So last chance chat. Uh, now is our time uh, to get ready to do our drawing for our Rem Alternus swag bag. So get your dice bag filled with Rem Alternus goodies. Um, type in the chat, hashtag yay gay, um, and donate any last minute bits. Do a last minute subscription for seven entries. A hundred bits gets you one entry. Um, typing hashtag yay gay gets you one entry. Um, Thomas is going to be back uh, with us after the, I dropped a dice, um, after the uh, credits and we will announce the winner. So make sure you stay around. You must be present to win. And then I will message you on Twitch for your um, address so that we can ship this to you. So you get lots of cool stickers. You get your patch. Oop, I'm throwing stuff, guys. <laughs> you get your patch. You get buttons. You get poker chips. Um, you get Shadowrun dice. Um, so lots of cool stuff in there. So definitely make sure you type your hashtag yay gay. And we will see you right after the credits. Bye. Bye. everyone we are back we are ready to do our drawing uh so thomas just jumped in and said that we have 126 entries which is freaking awesome everyone Pretty and uh i rolled if you can see it in the chat still yep i rolled a 53 so who is our lucky winner all right give me a, a minute one two three four <laughs> Four, five, six. <laughs> like that's gonna stop me <laughs> amazing all right who is it gonna be okay so the, number, the number was 53 so yep. that's uh riot house entertainment holy butts Ooh. that's james Congrats, James. Uh, thank you so much. Really excited. Um, this is great. So um, I will be sending you a message for your address, and we will ship this out to you. Thank you guys so much. Tune in next week for another chance to win a swag bag. Um, and make sure that you tune in. So we've got a full schedule. We've got um, tomorrow is community game night, so you can come onto our Discord channel and play with us. We've got uh, Saturday morning is the premiere of D&D Episodicals 4. 
which is our prom predominantly black cast that has, uh, they're playing Descent into Avernus, and it's going to be super awesome. And uh, Shay, who is in chat tonight, and Chris, who's in chat tonight, are both in that, uh, and it's going to be badass. Um, Sunday at 7 to 10 p.m. is Light Clockwork, which is our D&D 5e um, stream that takes place in the world of Chaolifus, which is the world of the comic book we just launched on uh, Kickstarter. So it's a steampunk fantasy world and it's super cool. Uh, Monday, 8 to 10 is uh, Dresden Files. Tuesday, 7 to 10 is Shadowrun 5th Edition Chicago Missions. And when things we are off. So we will be back here on Thursday next week, 8 to 10. And thank you all so much for joining us. Bye. Bye. Bye.